sometime last week or even a little over a week ago, Grammarly announced they got another one billion dollar funding from, uh, I believe, uh, a company called General Catalyst. Now, I think startups and tech companies getting funding is nothing really surprising. The reason why this caught my eyes was because I clearly remember when ChatGPT first came out. I thought, oh, Grammarly is gonna go out of business because checking your grammar, right, fixing your emails and your spellings and all that, you can easily do that with ChatGPT. So why does anyone ever need Grammarly again? So uh, when I saw the news, uh, if you can put the uh, the, the article uh, up on the screen, uh, essentially again, uh, Grammarly announces uh, their they got one billion founding for their growth, um, making sure they're, you know, growing and uh, expanding into um, some new technologies and business, etc. So I started thinking, in the area of all the AI agents, all you know, ChatGPT of its sort, right? Uh, what else is out there? Gemini, um, per. Uh, Perplexity. Thank you. Perplexity. Um, what are some of the use cases? How can some of the niche area products survive? Um, if you remember, I talked to you about another AI tool uh, that was released a while ago, but recently got traction called Granola. Um, <laughs> it's an AI note taking tool. Um, for, you know, whenever you're dialing to meetings, you can use it to take, you know, again, nothing groundbreaking, right? There's a lot of AI noting and tools out there already. Um, I was very impressed with Gran Granola because um, it had a very unique uh, design that's that fits my need really well. So I really, really like that. And I uh, stumbled upon an interview by the co-founders uh, and the CEOs uh, of Granola. We can put it up on the screen over there, the uh, YouTube uh, interview, where he talked about what are some of the use cases or some scenarios where you would use ChatGPT and what are some of the scenarios where you would actually default to some of the more niche and more specific purpose uh, tools. Let's hear this. In the beginning has always been low frequency use cases that are maybe non-critical are going to be eaten up by the general agents. So I think if if it's like a consumer use case that you do like twice a month, it's definitely going to go to ChatGPT or Anthropic. If you are uh, doing something like really matters, like it's like professional tooling where your performance really matters and you want to optimize for that use case, then bespoke tools that are optimized for that are going to be way better. And I think that's what you're starting to see things like um, like cursors valuation and you know, like windsurf just got acquired. I think it's like prototypical, like they're just like wrappers on, on Sonnet 3.7 or whatever. Right. Um, but actually they're like amazing. And there's so it's hard to build great software and the Delta of, if you're using one of those Let's products, how much more the, the idea is basically right for the low frequency activities. For example, if I'm rewriting an email or if I'm putting together a marketing material, which is not my day to day job, if I only need to do it once, in a month kind of thing, I would go to ChatGPT because it's a low frequency use case. If uh, it's something I'm doing every single day, if I'm a marketing agent, right, I need to put together marketing materials every single day, then I would probably go to uh, a tool that's specifically built up for marketing scenarios. So um, I think what this is telling me is there's still um, proof and evidence out there uh, that finding your niche, right, finding your specific area really matters for a product. Uh, although there's tons of really good large language models out there, um, you still there's still a chance for for um, founders and creators and startups out there. So yeah, that's my thought. Any any thought you would have on on this? No, I just remember when you walked into the door and you were like. Like, why? Why do we need grammar at least? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, my thought was like, uh, I understand the ChatGPT case, but I guess uh, at least I haven't used ChatGPT on like an active basis yet where it like marks down that, hey, 
now write your email better here. Usually, you know, I would still have to like copy paste this stuff over. So I think that's where the Grammarly thing can still shine. But uh, but one billion is this quite a lot, and I I didn't expect it to happen. Yeah, yeah, me too. But you know, let's see, let's see where uh, Grammarly turns out to be. 